All right, one of the complaints on the TX16S is often the uh, sound quality, the volume, and the clarity. Uh, I've been working on my own mod, and uh, let me know what you think. Here's the uh, stock sound quality and volume. Flaps on. Take off flaps down. Landing flaps down. I'll activate my mod that I've been working on. All right, tell me what you think. Flaps up. Take off flaps down. Landing flaps down. All right, stay tuned if you want to see how I've uh, done this mod. Let me take just a minute to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay offers fast and easy prototyping services for your custom printed circuit boards, uh, 3D printing, CNC, and all number of different uh, services. Their website also has an active community where you can upload your own projects and uh, share them with others and, and also use others' projects. You can find projects for just about anything on here. Uh, click the link below and you'll get a $5 discount off your first order. So my first prototype of this speaker modification. I didn't want to make any dramatic changes to the radio. Uh, I believe I could put some of these components or all of them inside the radio, but this first uh, iteration, I didn't want to do that. So with this, uh, with this particular modification, all I've had to do is modify this little cover plate for the module bay. Uh, and it can come right out and you can use your module bay uh, after that with no problem because you're not changing anything on the radio. I didn't have to cut anything or anything like that. I'm using the headphone jack and I'm running that out to a small amplifier and a DC to DC converter that I'm using. I'm just pulling battery voltage straight out of that. Let me pop this out and I'll show you what I've gotten here. And I did go through a couple of different iterations. I've had some different speakers I've been experimenting with. I found this little tiny small one that really fits on here nicely. And I've just got double sided adhesive sticking it on there. Uh, moving forward with this, you know, you could easily 3D print, you know, a new cover pur purpose built to uh, house all these components. but. Uh, for this, it's very simple. Uh, the kits that I bought actually had multiples of all these parts, so I really spent about 28 bucks or so for all the parts I bought, but if you divided up the parts that I used on this, it's only about uh, not even $11 worth of components that are in this. Uh, I just had to spend more than that because the kits that you get off of Amazon have, like I've got four of these speakers and uh, several of the amplifiers, but uh, let me pop this out and I'll show you what I've got. So this just plugs into the headphone jack. It's a right angle, three and a half millimeter stereo jack. Uh, but the little module base still pops off normally. So let me pull this out. And everything's attached to the module bay. I'm just tapping in power off the module bay port. Two of these wires are for power, but you do have to activate the module bay. So you'll they'll be turning on your uh, external RF module in each model separately to do this. Uh, there is a way to do it. You could get five volts out of here and then you wouldn't have to use this DC DC converter, which is actually better as I'll show you as I get into it. There, there is a little bit of noise that comes out of these power wires that goes through this uh, DC DC converter. So when there's no sound coming out of it, there is a, a very faint buzz coming out of the speaker, uh, but it's not bad. Um, so let me unplug this, and I'll show you what it is. This little amplifier. So this first part is just a little amplifier. It actually has an on-off potentiometer on it. I've got some that don't have the potentiometer that we can try. That uh, You can't turn them up and down. I haven't tested it yet. But it uh, could work actually pretty good, and you would lose that. But we got plenty of room in this module bay with this on here, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but you can actually turn it on and off with this. But since it's not sticking out, it's not really convenient to uh, mess with it. So I've just got it preset at roughly 50% uh, um, volume on this amplifier. And then, of course, the amplifier in the or the the volume knob that I've got programmed into my S1 on the radio uh, still controls this because it controls the headphone jack. Uh, that's this little board here. And all I've got on it is uh, there's power. There's uh, this will take uh, up to six volts input. So the problem with using that directly was that it goes up to over eight volts when the battery's fully charged. And even at low, it's not below six. So this can only take up to six volts. The uh, capacitor on it, I can't really see it. I've hot glued it around here, but it only goes up to, I believe it's 6.3 volts is the capacitor limit. So you get above six volts, you're risking blowing up that capacitor. Um, so since I wanted to keep it housed and all self-contained in this module bay, I needed to be able to drop that 8 volts down to the usable 5 volts that the amplifier needs, and that's what this other little secondary board is. 
the secondary board has power coming in and it can take you know upwards of 24 to 30 uh, volts I think so I've got it set uh, with this little trimmer potentiometer this one's a little touchy because it's not a multi-turn potentiometer so I had to put it on my workbench I gave it about 8 volts and then I put my multimeter on the outlet and I adjusted it until I had uh, about 5.1 volts on the outlet and then I've got a couple of wires soldered to that those go up to my amplifier and then uh, there is a it is stereo amp and I'm not using the one channel I'm only using the uh, uh, one of the channel outputs for the one speaker so you could actually get two speakers on here I've got another one you could probably if you 3d printed this up you could probably make fit a couple of speakers I've actually got a different speaker that I was first experimenting with this is the first speaker I was experimenting with and it actually sounded a little bit better I think it actually has a it's a, like a tuned you know port for bass and stuff so I mean it actually sounded pretty good and it's a slightly bigger speaker but you can see what I had to do is mount it uh, vertically on that and I had it just some double-sided adhesive sticking around there so it sounded pretty good but I just didn't like the the size so possibly if I 3d printed something maybe I would go with a little bit bigger speaker uh, but this one works pretty good and you heard it it sounds really good you could also use different connectors to make it a little easier I've just got two individual ones so it's a little fiddly to plug them into that if you use a standard uh, three pin servo connector just make sure you get the right pins in the right holes um, and it'll, it'll make it a little bit easier to plug in there and then uh, the, so the only mod I did was to notch out this cover to leave room for the wires to go in and out and then on this other side I just cut a little notch out of that so that these wires when plugged in because they're a little tall and I, I could could have soldered some wires to the bottom of that but I didn't want to mess with those pins because I still want to be able to use it for my external modules you know ELRS or 4-in-1 or whatever so these just allow it to pass up through uh, a little bit so the wires pop back down so again if you're 3d printing this you could make a little uh, you can raise that up and make it clear uh, so it could be a cool little project uh, I may uh, fiddle with that maybe expert 3d printers out there want to mess with that you certainly can I don't have any ownership of this design this is just I uh, think something I came up with so I'd be curious what you guys all come up with plug it back in so your second pin up from the bottom is your zero volts or ground DC negative whatever you want to call it my industrial automation background we call it zero volts so third one up is your battery voltage so the only ones you're going to use are the second and third ones up don't plug into the other ones and then you just got to tuck those wires in there doing this again I would shorten up this three and a half millimeter jack a little bit because it's a little a little tight shoving all this cable in there but uh, it does work just be careful not to damage those pins so I'll plug that in get it lined up snaps right on and then uh, you know using the radio holding it I haven't noticed that it got you know that these bug me obviously you know that speaker could get dinged a little bit you know because it's exposed but they're really cheap I got a whole kit of four of these things where it's like uh, like 12 bucks for four speakers and two amps for a little kit so really inexpensive double-sided adhesive so that's it and then you do need to go in and turn on your external module for the specific model and notice you didn't hear it on that when it first came up because when you have a switch warning it actually shuts off that external module until you clear that so now it's back on and I can uh, hit the buttons 200 300 100 I just programmed some random verbal call out so I could test it uh, I've wired up the amplifier to my amp meter to see what kind of amperage draw and the highest I've been able to see you know 244 milliamps being drawn from the radio's battery and that's only while it's talking right now it's drawn five milliamps six milliamps so not much and uh, I did experiment a little bit with tipping the speaker like voicing it up versus back to see how much different in sound it made I thought maybe it'd be a lot better if it was facing up so it wouldn't be going away from you but didn't seem to help that much 100 300 200 100 so you can see the sound is significantly louder than the stock little speakers in there so 
anyway there's uh there's my little modification hopefully uh gives you some ideas uh i kind of like this just because i can pop this off i don't have to worry about uh, modifying the radio uh my uh, next iteration of this i think i am going to pop this open because uh, i personally don't have a problem modifying the radio i was just trying to do it and see because i think a lot of people might be interested in doing this without changing the radio so i might pop it out um if i get instead of that little uh, boost uh, DC to DC power converter if I just take five volts directly from the aux ports I have I did test that and you didn't and it will power the amplifier just fine so uh, if you open it up and tap into power off of one of these auxiliary ports and get the five volts off of that you could eliminate that other power supply board and uh, I don't know if you can hear that I'm going to hold it close to the phone see if maybe you can hear it There, uh, there is a slight, very faint buzz to that all the time whenever the thing's powered up. So to enable that uh, power to turn on the speaker, uh, you do have to go into your external module. And I just set mine to multi, but it really doesn't matter. Any module you activate needs to be powered up, so it's going to apply power to that port. So that will turn it on. So if I turn this to off, it's gonna shut off my amplifier. So I could turn this off. Now it's not gonna do anything, and all you can hear is the front speaker. It's really quiet. And also, if you notice, whenever you have the headphone jack plugged in, when you have the headphone jack plugged in, the front speaker still operates. It only disables the rear speaker that's inside of the back case on the Mark II. If you have a Mark I, you don't have the back speaker anyway, but uh, the headphone jack only disables that back one so the front speaker is still on it's really quiet if I unplug that headphone jack you'll be able to hear the back speaker so it'll be a little bit louder 200, 300, 100. but you can tell it's just not anywhere near the sound quality as that little uh, that modified little, little boom box I'll turn the multi back on turn the volume down a little I don't need that loud now that that's back on and I'm plugged in, 300. it's way louder. 100, 200. And a lot of people don't care about the sound, but uh, I personally like the call outs. I set a lot of different, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I use a lot of the programming stuff. I have call outs for low battery volt warnings. Uh, uh, my recent prop testing, when I get to altitude, I have it say altitude uh, set point reached. Um, things like that. So I want to be able to hear what my radio is telling me. And if I set different, uh, different alarms and uh, alerts, I want to be able to hear them. Hope that's interesting to some of y'all. Let me know if you have any other ideas. If anything else you've done, put it down in the comments below. It'd be interesting to see. Thanks for watching.